everybody video here for you today now i wanted to do this one before i start working on some longer videos i've been looking at this for a while now and i keep on thinking about doing a video on this but today's the day we are going down to the great pyramids of giza and we are going to talk about a specific tomb out in the mastaba field out here and we are going to talk about how it identifies the original monument the original shrine of giza Look down here at Giza here, the Great Pyramids and the what we call the Sphinx today down here. Today we are going to talk about one of these mastabas and what was found in it. We're going to go just east of the Great Pyramid here, right down here to this mastaba right here. This is called 7410-7420. It's a double burial, but there was a daughter of Khufu. And her sarcophagus found in here let's just look at that now here is a pic from over 100 years ago of them excavating down here at this mastaba and george reisner led the excavation work here and he worked in giza between i think it was 1897 and the 1920s and he did a lot of work and was actually still dictating uh, some of his books to his secretary at the time he passed away, even though he was totally blind. So he was pretty dedicated, and he found some really cool stuff out in the Giza Plateau. But here is a look inside the Mastaba, and a lot of stuff was taken away here, but he got in here and found her sarcophagus. And here is the lid of the sarcophagus. And we are going to take a little closer look at this when it was put back together. Who is this? the great god Anubis, the original god of the Giza Plateau. Now here is a website I found whose sarcophagus was this, Marisank II, and she was likely daughter of King Khufu, Pharaoh Khufu, coming from the mighty fourth dynasty of the old kingdom. So that pushes this back maybe about 4,600 years ago. Some of her titles, She Who Sees Horus and Seth, king's wife attendant of horus and king's daughter of his body there is the old language sounds that you have to interpret from the hieroglyphs and then figure out what each word means hieroglyphs they are super difficult but that's kind of why i like it now here is the sarcophagus as it sits today in the boston museum and remember this is coming from the family of khufu and khafre the mighty rulers of the fourth dynasties so if these are royal sarcophagus well, the stories put on them here are going to be very sacred and reflect the most meaningful beliefs of these people at this time. But the old kingdom was certainly putting stuff on their sarcophagus. And here is the lid and the hieroglyphs tell a story on the sarcophagus. And it's really important to tell because it identifies the great shrine we call the Sphinx today. Now, this side of the sarcophagus, it has a few titles on it. And if we blow it up, you can see the hieroglyphs in here. But let's just read what these say. But it simply states a few of her titles on the side. Great of Perfection, King's Wife, Marisank, Follower of Horus, and Marisank, her title down here, these three hieroglyphs. Now here is this side of the sarcophagus and the top here. And when you're looking at hieroglyphs, you can't think of how we read sentences, noun, verb, adjective. It, they give you ideas, and then you just have to put the concept together. Here on top, it says, the one who sees Horus and Seth, Marisank. And then down here, probably a list of offerings, because I know this symbol right here is the one thousand symbol but down here clearly some sort of portions or numbers of offerings a thousand oxen here a thousand fowl on the very end there um, beer and bread alabaster and linen but think of hieroglyphs in the numering system kind of like roman numerals here this is four of the one thousand symbols so this is four thousand these are the hundreds there's six of them 4600 and then 22 here at the bottom here is the lid of the sarcophagus and this is a very important person coming from the royal family so very important stories can be put on the lid and i have stated this many times that 
Onubis was the original god of Giza till maybe the end of the 5th or beginning of the 6th dynasty when something really, really bad happened. And when that happens, the people look at the gods and they demand a change sometimes. But the main god of Giza changed from what we know as Anubis to Osiris. And this is a point in history where I think the original shrine was ruined, defaced, beheaded, what have you. But here is a translation of the lid of the sarcophagus. A gift which the king gives to Anubis, lord of the necropolis, foremost of the divine booth, that she might be buried, as should be done for her, one great of perfection, Marisong. So Anubis is identified as Lord of the Necropolis, and surely you have a shrine of the Lord of the Necropolis, the original God, that's whose shrine is going to be there. Foremost of the divine booth, now, why would they put divine booth? Well, you look up booth in the dictionary. The second definition is enclosure. He's Lord of the necropolis, foremost of the divine booth or enclosure. They are telling us what the original shrine of Giza is. Now, when originally looking into this mystery, I love Graham Hancock's theory, maybe 10,500 BC, staring at Leo. That all was fine for me. But as I've researched this over the last three, four, five years now, I realize that that is just an assumption based on when they think the Great Pyramids are built. And there is nothing coming from the Egyptians that say anything about a lion guarding the sacred necropolis. And there is certainly nothing coming from the Egyptians about an alignment to Leo. And they would have documented that if that was the case. But to me, in putting together the answer of this, you just can't look at one thing. You can't look at an old statue and say, well, this is, this is what the monument of Giza was. You have to look at the ancient text. You have to look at what we have today on the Giza Plateau and at how it fits into those stories. Also, the gods are based on what they saw. They saw jackals perched at the edge of the desert guarding cemeteries. That's part of the reason why that is up there. But the only god allowed at the entrance to tombs or necropolis is Anubis. The ancient text says he is the guardian of Giza, the great shrine of Giza. He's guarding the underworld. Here, passages going down. It says he's on the box coffin of Orion. We have the Osiris shaft going down right up here. And certainly Osiris and Orion are connected. And there's a huge sarcophagus down there that really doesn't have a good answer, except if you look at the ancient text. And this was always a necropolis, going back to times not recorded. The only god allowed at the entrance to tombs or necropolis is what we call Anubis today. This is one of the clear indications what the original shrine was. Now, today, we have names for these places, the Valley Temple, Sphinx Temple here today. Why do we call this the Sphinx Temple? Because the Greeks came in here about 2,400 years ago and flipped the history to the victors. They write the history. So they renamed this monument a Sphinx, woman's face on a lion's body with wings, just to kind of fit it into their mythology. So it's never a lion until about 2,400 years ago. And all of you who think it was originally a lion, I think you're wrong. But certainly there's basis to calling it a lion because that's what it's been for the last 2,400 years. But in the sacred text coming from the land we call Egypt today, that is a Greek name for the place. There was an older name. In that text that takes place at sacred Rostow, which we know as Giza today, they identify this as the Temple of Tep2F, the Temple of Anubis upon his hill. But today, I'm kind of stupefied. Here is a video I made, I don't know, about a year ago, maybe. I can't remember exactly when I made this. But it kind of stupefies me when people say that the monument of Giza has lion's arms and paws. These lion's arms and paws are kind of stumpy, and they don't come out very far. But on old pics here, I compared it with a replica statue 
of Anubis, one of the most famous statues of Anubis we have. But here you can see the paws and really everything about the front of this statue, clearly ancient Anubis, not a lion. Here's a video I made at the same time as that comparison video. We have the most famous afterlife scene in Egypt here, the weighing of the heart against the feather. And this really is all about the alignment on March 21st. Equal balance, light and darkness, good and evil. And what do we have on March 21st? We have a equal amount of light and darkness on the spring equinox. So this is really all about the alignment. You see a little sphinx here staring to the east, tells you what this is all about. But in this video, I showed the Pyramidian and how Anubis is guarding the gates of heaven. And that's perfect symbolism. They tell us he's guarding the gates of heaven. And here in Tut's tomb, on top of the box coffin of Orion. And I'll be going into Orion in a video coming up here kind of putting that one together, but clearly Anubis, the pyramid, the gates of heaven, tells us what the shrine of Giza was. But a very important sarcophagus coming from somebody who was described as the queen of Egypt in the old dynasty. The sarcophagus lid tells us who was lord of the necropolis, foremost of the divine booth. The second definition of booth is enclosure. They are telling us exactly what the original shrine of Giza was. They identify this place down here, the Temple of Teptuef, Anubis upon his hill. It's not just one thing, it's everything that tells us the original shrine of Giza was the Lord we know as Anubis today. I've been talking about Anubis for quite a while, and I'll bang the drum for truth all day long. Hope you thought that was cool and you all have a very nice day.